It's tea time. Welcome, world. This is uh, Tosh Berman. This is Tea with Tosh. And my special guest is artist Carol Karumpas. Welcome, Carol. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, Carol, why an artist? Why not a plumber or a surfer or something like that? <sighs> well, actually, um, there was an electrician that came to my studio two weeks ago, and he asked me if I'd be interested in working with him. Yeah? The pay would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> actually, sir, I sort of work with that person, actually. Yeah? yeah he sort of does all the pre-questions before the guests come on the I show. I get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> why artist? Yeah. Actually, actually, why? I wanted to be a poet. Actually, I wanted to be an archaeologist. My, gran uh, my father decided that I uh, wouldn't make any money at that. Mm -hmm. So then I wanted to be a poet. Mm -hmm. We're going downhill, as you can see. Yeah, I can see. And then, yes. uh, and then I ended up. Um, then I was going to be a writer, and then I ended mm -hmm. up being a painter. Mm -hmm. And then the music and the language and the painting all got thrown together. But anyway. you do that now. It's what you do. You are yeah, so, I know. you are a poet and a musician and, and a singer and a uh, painter and all archaeologist. That stuff. And that too. Do yeah. you dig a lot? Yeah. Hmm. You find interesting things. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we brought some slides, didn't we? Yeah. And I think we should show them. Okay. I think because I think uh, images are more powerful than words. Sometimes. Okay. So let's, let's let it roll. Okay. So what, what, what are we seeing right now? Um, let's see. All of these uh, slides or pieces are from the last uh, year and a half. Mm -hmm. And this piece is smaller. It's about two by three feet. It's called Daredevils. Um, the two lovebirds in the uh, background there are made of broken glass, and then uh, there is a linear image of the man and woman fighting on uh -huh. top of the original image. So that's, I use that, that line image a lot for psychological or emotional um, impact. Uh -huh. And all of these works are basically about men and women uh -huh. and cultural references. Is, it, are they, is that sort of like a cha-cha line? Cha-cha line, uh, that's uh, four men hiding behind a tree so the bull won't get them. <laughs> <laughs> and they completely fooled the uh, they're bull. Com they're completely scared. <laughs> Should we go by the next slide? Okay. Which one do we do? Push this? We push the front one. Right here? No, right here. Oh. Okay. Okay. This, um, this is a drawing, and uh, it's on black paper with um, white pencil, mm -hmm. uh, image of the blind woman, and then overlaid on top of that is uh, a male-female couple, mm -hmm. uh, blind faith. Get it? I, I'm not that <laughs> blind. I wear glasses, you know. <laughs> okay. That's beautiful. I love that one. Okay, that, that drawing was a study for this painting, mm -hmm. uh, which is made of uh, four panels. It's about three by four feet. And uh, again, uh, it's black and white. This is all acrylic on wood. Um, mm -hmm. The four different images. Um, I always I use a lot of language image, and then the line work again of the male female couple. Mm -hmm. It's like set four separate panels. Yeah, they're actually framed uh -huh. uh, four separate panels that go together to form one image. Hmm. Very interesting. Okay, this is about uh, five feet by eight feet, and uh, it's big, mm -hmm. and it's called Head and Hell, Feet in Paradise. And um, the piece essentially is about, uh, what would we call this? Uh, again, male-female references, but uh -huh. uh, an area of infantilism. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Especially the lower half. <clears throat> It's like, it looks like from a, like one of those romance, true romance comic books. Yeah, those are actually um, plaster heads. The uh -huh. baby heads are, you know, the happy, sad plaster heads. And those are inset in um, two frames. And uh -huh. then, let's see what else is physical in this piece. The cactus is made up of broken glass and nails. And uh -huh. then the uh, coyote and is made up of hay and modeling paste. And the uh -huh. lamb is made up of... Uh, cotton and modeling paste. And then the, the female figure, the sort of line, uh, naked female mm -hmm. figure that's going across is actually lifted up off of the uh, uh, acrylic panel. Mm -hmm. um, and the reference, uh, all of these images are, are functioning as mm -hmm. metaphors. Mm -hmm. So they're multi-layered and they're cross Do you use uh, real models or use like from photographs? No, all of the images come from um, 
I either just, love uh, comic magazines uh -huh. or National <laughs> Geographic. I use a lot of images that come from ads. Uh -huh. So they're meant to be selling one thing, and then I sort of take them out of that out context, of context and yeah. shift their meaning. That's that, con that context thing. Context thing. Okay, this is uh, also a big one. Um, it's, um, I think, let's see, about five by eight. Mm -hmm. And also, these, these large paintings have like five inch frames on them mm -hmm. so that the images are set back into their own world, almost like a shadow box, mm -hmm. you know, part of this world. Um, it's called Love Charm, and uh, really the only physical elements in this piece are where the couple uh, are washing dishes. The bubble areas of where they're talking mm -hmm. are broken glass. Mm -hmm. And elements like that they are painted blue, uh, again, become like mm -hmm. references to what's going on. The language that's going on in this is uh, a love charm from um, the 18th, 18th or 19th century. And it's um, sort of in contradiction to the images. Uh -huh. The tension between the, the two uh, people doing the dishes is visually felt. You can just feel it. Yeah, they're not happy. No. You know them personally? <laughs> I think I've met them. Yes, I think I did too. And how dare you comment on my life that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. Okay. Um, this piece is also, uh, I think it's about six by, six by eight, mm -hmm. eight and a half. Um, the other two larger pieces were on panels, wood panels. This one is on canvas. Mm -hmm. And it's called Deja Vu. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. What's he saying there? Why? Why will she not speak to anyone? And uh -huh. then it says to make conversation in the old tongue, the old worn out language, it can't be done. Usually I use uh, my own writing. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, it's from Walker Percy, and I thought it was sort of perfect for the combination of images. Mm. It's funny. You're, you're, the, the, you know, the, the, the drawings have like a very 40s illustration feel to it. I mean, is that like your favorite And the paintings, part? well, a lot of the images come from um, 40s, 50s uh -huh. kind of sources. Uh -huh. Again, going back to this business of like advertising, a lot of those images uh, within that particular cultural period were uh -huh. trying to sell men and women in a certain way. Uh -huh. uh, and again, that's why that's where those images come from. This is another drawing. Um, it's called Echo. One will suggest, one will resist. And these heads that are in this um, drawing were also mm -hmm. used in the last painting. Mm -hmm. They sort of circle around the painting. Sequel. Yeah, they're actually uh, heads from an x-ray book. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, showing the part of uh, the head that they want to shoot. Very interesting. I like how the, the timelessness of it, and that sort of four. Because always when I see something from the forties, it always has a timeless quality to me. I don't know why. Yeah. It's always contemporary looking. Well, it's not. They're not meant to be t used for nostalgic mm -hmm. reasons. They're more for. Yeah, it isn't at all. What that image was uh -huh. used for in terms of culture. Um, this is another drawing, and again, um, the heads are there. Uh, the images that they're running through. Um, or over are from uh, last year at Marian Bad. Oh, great! The film, yes. And this piece is called "From Last Year." Oh, great! And the heads are sort of all uh -huh. this line work is used mm -hmm. as like a psychological device. Mm -hmm. So it changes how you see those images, as does the language. If you were to make a movie, would that be the movie you would like to make? Not a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to do a TV version, like a TV uh, serial, the last year at Marian Bad. Okay. Wow, this is like really ritualistic. Yeah, that's sort of the idea of myth and metaphor and culture and ritual sort of coexists in all of these. Mm -hmm. um, this one's called Thunderbolt Handler, and it's also quite large. It's on canvas mm -hmm. uh, and will also be framed in the same way. And it's about six by eight or nine. Um, where the language says romantic dynamite instruments of passion out of mm -hmm. the great and terrible wilderness they carve the promised land. That language is actually carved into uh, the image. Oh, really? It's like modeling paste and then the language is oh, I see. carved So in. literally it's carved in the it's painting. It's literally carved. Uh, huh. And the two figures, uh -huh. uh, the two oriental figures, um, 
our guardian uh -huh. figures, uh, and their chests and their heads are all made up of broken glass. Um, the piece is sort of about um, uh, desire uh -huh. and otherness, uh, that which is uh, the most, say, sensual uh, elements are in front, and then uh, the circle, the gold leaf circle in the back uh -huh. is sort of the, the other desire. And yeah. that is my cat, Senor, in the front. Do you want another cat? I have to get rid of a cat. You want to? Does he need a companion? Uh, no, he's a um, single cat. Oh, okay. Well, he doesn't like other cats. He likes people. I guess the future guests will have to take my cat. Okay, this is the um, last drawing. Mm -hmm. And uh, this drawing, let's see, the bottom image is uh, Emma Peel from the Avengers. Oh, the, oh I love the Avengers. And uh, I've used uh, <laughs> images of uh, the Avengers in performances before. Oh, that's great. And then the ladder leading up, uh -huh. uh, the couple making love, and then the, the whole structure uh -huh. system that goes over it is a uh, heating system for uh -huh. a furnace. And it's called a kind of perpetual motion machine. Oh, that's great. It's like a serial. Yeah. Like a, you know, like a movie serial. Yeah. A thrill. And that's it? That's it. Terrific. Thank you so much for bringing the slides. You're welcome. I like them. Um, you also brought a video, didn't you, of some sort? Right. Um, let's see, the last performance I did uh, was called A Game of Solitaire, but it is uh, on half-inch tape, so it's not here. Mm -hmm. uh, the one we're showing is called uh, Mystical Unions, and the piece is from about 1984. 1984? Yeah, and the structure of the piece essentially um, <coughs> moves around a game of chess that mm -hmm. a man and woman are playing. And then there are um, cultural references, there's alchemical references, and there are like science versus occult. Mm -hmm. um, there's a uh, male persona, and then obviously I'm the female persona. Um, and the section that you're going to be seeing is the last part of the performance, which was an hour long. Mm -hmm. And it's a sequence where um, I believe there's some chess reference, some jokes, some alchemy reference, and then I go into a song. Mm -hmm. uh, the singing is done with a pre-recorded tape mm -hmm. that has um, my vocals and percussion. So this tape is like everything for the whole family, a little bit of everything. Um, if it's not there, you're missing something. Well, um, audience, please watch very carefully because it'll be a test after the viewing. Yeah. Let's let it rip. Yeah. Let it roll. Yeah. <laughs> men marry women? Because sheep can't cook. Why do women marry men? Because dogs can't drive. What were the first words that Adam said to Eve? Stand back, I don't know how big this thing's gonna get. man who had a really good suntan, but he wanted to have a good suntan over his whole body, and the only place he wasn't suntan was his penis. So he thought, I've got an idea. I'll go down to the beach, I'll cover myself up entirely in sand with the exception of my penis, and that way I'll become tan all over. So he did. He went down to the beach, he covered himself all up in sand, and there he was covered up with the exception of his penis sticking up out of the sand. Meanwhile, down the beach, these two little old ladies were walking. They came upon this, and the one little old lady said to the other, look at that. Remember when we were really young and we were scared to death of it? And then we got a little older and we couldn't get enough of it? And now that we're really old, Look, it's growing wild on the beach. The pawn can move in only one direction, forward. The pawn is the only chessman which captures in a manner different from the way in which it moves. The pawn moves vertically in the files but in capturing, the pawn takes the piece or pawn, which is diagonally forward in adjoining squares, not the piece on the square directly ahead of it. 
on turning things to gold from a man and woman make a circle, then a square, then a triangle, finally a circle and you will achieve the philosopher's stone. But when we marry the crowned king with the red daughter, she will conceive a son in the gentle fire and shall nourish him through our fire. Then is he transformed and his tincture or tinge of color remains red as flesh. Our royal son takes his tincture from the fire and death, darkness, and the waters flee away. The dragon shuns the light of the sun, and our dead son shall live. The king comes forth from the fire and rejoices in the marriage. Out of other things, thou wilt never make the one until thou hast first become one thyself. Newspaper headlines, oh, oh, TV announcer bylines, oh, oh, proclaiming the news of defeat. Plum blue and royal guards, oh, oh, right through London. Some folks use the 
term salvation. Oh, 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 oh. The hero and the heroine finally merge. And Doris says, in ancient times, no worry, no fear. People died, but after long good lives, Give us back time. Give us back time. Dancing waters, a tropical fountain. It was supposed to be paradise, but it's just now, now, now. Dancing waters, a tropical fountain. It was supposed to be paradise, but it's just now, 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 now. Very interesting tape, Carol. I like it very much. Thanks. What I heard. Thanks. <laughs> That's the the, the, audio the last. The, the, last uh, the audio was like was great. Well, the most of it, it's it's sort of this language mm -hmm. image singing, language image singing, and um, I did that piece about six different times. Peter Levitt, who is a poet, oh, was yeah. the uh -huh. male version uh -huh. um, in many of the pieces that I performed. On that particular tape, it's Roy Dell, who is uh -huh. also a painter, artist. Uh -huh. How many perform, uh, do you still do performances? Yeah, I haven't done any in about two years. The last one I did uh, was called A Game of Solitaire, mm -hmm. and it was based on um, games of solitaire, card mm -hmm. games. And the character I played was a um, night watchman for a natural history museum. Mm -hmm. And the three things the Night Watchman did was to play games of solitaire, mm -hmm. watch TV, uh, only watching the Ave Avengers, and only, only watching <laughs> the Avengers, mm -hmm. and then uh, giving these uh, uh, imaginary tours through the different parts of the museum. Mm -hmm. So again, it's it's romance, men, women, culture, science, mm -hmm. cult. Uh, there were also sequences of dreams, uh, mm -hmm. as there were also in Mystical Union. Uh, when you perform, do you feel in a sense trapped in the art world? As, I mean, you play, do you play in art galleries when you perform, or in museums? Or? Yeah, primarily I always have. That's one thing. I, I haven't done anything in a couple of years because I'm sort of, uh, I don't know, have been mm -hmm. going through what performance is and how it actually fits into the art world. Uh -huh. There's been so much collaboration in the last few years that it really has moved into theater. Uh -huh. um, and I tend to go back and forth between painting and performing and writing anyway. So. Mm -hmm. Do you separate it in your mind? Do you separate painting from like a live performance? or? They sort of end up in the same place. What will happen is I might do a series of paintings uh -huh. And then uh, that certain parts of that information get incorporated uh -huh. into the performance. So what was static becomes live. Uh -huh. uh, I'm like walking through being uh -huh. the paintings in a way. So what is it about boys and girls that interest you so much? Doesn't it interest everybody? Not me. Not oh, me. get out. Nobody here? <laughs> it's the oldest story in the world. Uh, it's the oldest story in the world. <laughs> uh -huh. And it's, uh, you know, you can um, dress it up and tell it a different way every time. Ever since you were a young teenager, were you always interested in, in sort of the conflict between uh, men and women? If there is a conflict, if there is tension. Well, I, there is that. I, I think of it also as duality, you know, mm -hmm. and what causes that duality and what... Uh, what makes the difference, uh, what makes it work and what makes it not work, mm -hmm. and how the culture influences the roles mm -hmm. and how they change, et cetera. Mm. And have men changed uh, over, the, over the years? I think so, don't you? I, I, I'm too much of a man to notice these things. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I look um, at myself in the mirror and I look at myself, and uh, I'm talking about evolution type of stuff. You're talking about like, I'm okay. talking maybe about de-evolution. De-evolution, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it's a very serious subject. Do you think women have changed? Yes, definitely. They're, they're totally different people than I know like five years ago. Yeah. I knew this girl five years ago, and I know her still, but she's absolutely different now. 
I don't know why. Maybe it's TV or something like that. <laughs> so you, did you put a record out? Yeah, in fact, I've, um, let's see, I did a performance called Target Practice, I think in 80 or 81, mm -hmm. and I did a record. I've also done books. Um, also, High Performance did a... Um, oh, the magazine? High Performance? Yeah, that, uh -huh. they did a record, a double record, actually. Oh, really? Several artists, Terry Allen's on it, um, mm -hmm. different people, and I have a song on that. Too. Well, Carol, thank you so much for being my guest. You're welcome. And please come back again. Okay. And World... Um, I don't know what to say to you all the time. You seem so distant sometimes, so please come to my house. Goodbye. Farewell. Adios.